Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about pressure, how you calculate pressure, the formula for it, and we'll look at pressure in liquids, and more specifically, their use in what are called hydraulic systems. So we'll think about a car braking system example. Now this video is aimed really at year nine, and forms part of the topic of pressure and moments. I've done a video already on, on moments, so this one is looking at the pressure side of things. So let's first of all put a formula in place and then we can explain exactly what we mean by it. Pressure is described as the force applied divided by the area which that force is applied over. So the pressure is equal to the force divided by the area. Let's think about this setup here. We've got a pin. So a normal sort of a pin tack that we're going to stick into a wall maybe. So here's a pin right there. We've got the, the gold bit of the pin here. And we're going to stick it in the floor. In fact, here is a thumb about to push that pin in. So we're going to push that pin into this floor here. Now, the thumb pressing down is applying a force. So there's a force pushing down onto the pin and force is measured in newtons. So we can put the units onto this formula here. So force is in newtons. Now the area that the force is applied to, well, area can be measured in centimetre squared, metre squared, millimetre squared. So in this one, we're going to imagine that it is centimetre squared for the area. So therefore, pressure would have units of newtons per centimetre squared in this example. So clearly, a greater pressure would result from a force being applied in a smaller area. So let's look at the thumb on the pin. The thumb is applying a force on quite a large surface, the red surface of the pin. So there isn't much pressure, let's say, being exerted downwards. But if we focus on this region here, where the pin is making contact, we have the same force being applied down through the pin, but the area that the pin is making contact with, this area here, is very, very small. So if we use the formula, you have a very large number for force divided by a very small number for the area. So the pressure is very great. So there is less pressure between the thumb and the pin head, if you like, compared to the pressure that is being exerted here from the, the head of the pin or the base of the pin rather, to the actual surface it's being pushed into. So pressure relates to force and area. Now I know I've referred to in a previous video about um, this triangle that some people like to use to help them revise. I used it for the speed, distance and time formula. And what it says that if you want to work out pressure we put the symbols P for pressure, F for force, and A for area in this triangle. And you imagine covering up the one you want to work out. So if we cover up the P, that shows that you do F divided by A, force divided by area. So this line here is a divide by. So if we want the force, we do pressure times area. And if we want the area, we do the force divided by the pressure. Let's think of another example. So let's imagine, let's imagine that someone is standing on the ground with a shoe that looks like this. And let's imagine there's a second person 
who is wearing perhaps high heels standing on the same bit of ground like so. So we've got person one with a flat shoe and person two wearing say high heel shoes and we're going to look at the effect that they have on this surface here on the floor. Now let's imagine they both apply the same force. We need to consider the area that they apply the force over. The area that this blue shoe if you like is applying the force over is much greater than if you consider this point here on the high heeled shoe. So that force is being applied over a much smaller area. It's concentrating that force in the, over a smaller area. So the pressure that the red shoe exerts is far greater. Than that of the blue shoe. That's just a little bit there about pressure, force and area. Let's think about pressure in liquids specifically. So we can think about pressure in liquids. So for this, we'll just reduce the screen size down a moment. So let's just start by drawing a bottle here. Let's say it's a bottle of water. Just going to draw some water in this bottle here. Now what you find is that pressure in liquids is not only transmitted through the whole liquid. So pressure is transmitted through the liquid. It also increases with depth. So the deeper the liquid, or the deeper down you go in this bottle, the greater the depth. So it's almost saying like the water here, for example, is at greater pressure than the water at the top of the bottle. Now, the relationship between pressure and depth is shown by a water bottle with holes along its length. So let's imagine that I were to put holes in this bottle here, here, and here. What I'd actually see, and if I draw this over to the right hand side, what I would see would be water coming out a little bit like so. More water would be forced out from the hole at the bottom because pressure in a liquid, in this instance, depends on three things. The pull of gravity, which we take as 10 newtons per kilogram, the depth, and also the density of the liquid. So the deeper you go, the higher the pressure, and the denser the liquid, the heavier it is. So we should find that the water flows more freely from the bottom hole than that at the top. If we were to put three particular holes in, where I've put three X's. So let's move on now and talk more about hydraulic systems. So we're going to talk about pressure in liquids in specifically hydraulic systems. Now these use the principle that pressure is transmitted throughout a liquid. They're used to transfer movement from one part of the machine to another without actually linking them mechanically. Now all hydraulic systems use two pistons linked via a pipe, carrying a, a special oil, and that oil is called hydraulic fluid. Now, all hydraulic brake systems, such as those in a car, use two pistons, one bigger than the other, a master piston, and then a larger slave piston. That first master piston is used to apply a force, and that would put the liquid under pressure. So what we're going to do is just reduce the size of the screen a little. 
and in fact we'll move this into the corner just so that I can talk to you about this picture here at the bottom. So what I've just inserted here is a picture, or a very rough sketch if you like, of a hydraulic system in a car. And I want to identify two particular parts on this. So first of all at the top we've got here the master cylinder. So you can see that the man will or the woman will press down on the brake pedal and that will push. So the force applied by that foot will push the brake pedal, push that master cylinder and then that force applied to that cylinder will create a pressure that will be transmitted through what you can see as this blue fluid within this picture. That blue fluid is the brake fluid. Then what we have, and I'll colour this in green, let's just take these two for example. The ones I've coloured in green are what are called the slave pistons. Now the slave pistons deliberately have a much larger area and it all relates to the formula that I mentioned at the beginning. So let's put this formula on the side and we'll do it in red to represent that at the master cylinder. So we said that pressure is equal to force divided by area. Now the easiest way to think this through is to use an example. Let's imagine that we apply a 10 newton force, so the force is 10 newtons, to the master cylinder, that master piston, and the area of that is 5 centimetres squared. So we'll put that in 5 centimetres squared. Then we can see that at the master cylinder we get a pressure of 2 newtons per centimetre squared at the master cylinder or the master piston depending on which one you call it. Now interestingly just to add here as an, as an extra pressure, I've said that pressure has units of newtons per centimetre squared or newtons per metre squared depending on which, which one you're really looking at but you can also measure pressure in Pascals. So it's one thing just to note here, P also measured in, and the units for this are P with an little a. So P is also measured in Pascals, and one Newton meter squared we say is one Pascal. So P is also measured in Pascals. I'm just putting that there. Um, in this example, I'm, I'll continue with Newtons per centimetre squared, but it's just in case you see, pressure is also measured in Pascals in these kind of questions. So we're saying that 2 Newton per centimetre squared pressure is applied at the master piston. Now that means 2 Newton per centimetre squared pressure is transmitted all the way through that liquid. So all through this blue brake fluid, the same pressure, this two newton centimetre squared, is flowing through that liquid, is transmitted through that liquid. So when we get to the slave piston, if at the slave piston, and for this we'll put in the same formula, P is equal to F over A. If we rearrange the equation to get F, that would become force is equal to pressure times area. So you can see that our pressure is 2 from the previous calculation, because that's a constant. But now we multiply this by a bigger area, by having a larger slave piston area. So let's say the area of the slave piston were 50 centimetres squared. So 10 times that of the master piston. If the area were 50 centimetres squared, then can we see now that we have a force of 100 newtons. Our initial force at the master piston was 10 newtons. But now the force we've got at the slave piston is 100 newtons. 
So the whole purpose of this is to use the idea that pressure is equally transmitted in a liquid to be able to create a larger force in this machine. So when we apply a very small force to the brake pedal, that applies a very particular pressure to the liquid that's transmitted all the way through that fluid so that at a second piston, at the slave piston, by having a larger area, we can take that pressure and ultimately generate a greater force. Now that force is going to be applied to the brakes to stop the entire car. So a bigger force is exerted by the brakes than the driver exerted on the pedal. And that ultimately is the principle behind this hydraulic brake. We're just looking at the equation P equals F divided by A. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. We're keeping a constant pressure and we're changing the area to be able to generate a different force. Okay, hope all that helps.